After a six months break, Young Justice has returned with some crazy revelations. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mickey Geek Mixer here, and yes, guys, Young Justice has returned. I am so happy it came back. I was waiting for this, and I'm glad that they decided that for the beginning, we get three episodes, and then we get one episode each for the week, and then at the end, we'll end it with the last three episodes. I like it that way. I really do, because it gives us more to look forward to instead of that shortcoming we had in part one. But that's all aside, this... this these three episodes reveal so many revelations that are no doubt going to be crazy drama going forward in the future and betrayals that we already know are going to be coming soon enough. But let's go ahead and just start. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, guys. There was so much going on that I'm not. it took me a while to be like, how, how can I start this? Where am I going to start? But I realized that I have to start at the beginning with with the returning episode episode 14 and this and this was mostly dealing with the fact of of politics and public's opinion on the Justice League and not to mention how it's not just on earth but it's still out in the galaxy that some people still have a pub an uneasy public opinion about the Justice League, which we got when we got an episode that focused on Superman and Wonder Woman's team that's on the other side of the galaxy. They were on Thanagaria investigating an attack by Apocalypse, and we and then the Thanagarian that was working with them, not Hawkman and Hawk Girl who were there with them, they're on the Justice League. I'm talking about someone who's actually on Thanagarian. He he was already a voice in his 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 dislike of the Justice League. And this isn't just be and this isn't because of things that are going on on Earth. This is actually still re the damage that was uh, that was done to them back in season one. Remember when Justice League was taken over by the light, and some of them were gone for 16 hours and attacked and attacked the planets on other galaxies that that led into the trial in season two. Yes, the, the scars from that battle are still being shown through that Thanagarian who still has uh, who still has an unpopular opinion of the Justice League and doesn't really trust them all that much. Whoa, man, whoa. And if that's not cra and if that's not crazy enough though. So we all know Beast Boy outed out the goody goggles, but of course, since the light hit is having face up there in the public's opinion on TV with with Lex Luthor as the sec as the as the general and uh, was that again oh yeah secretary general I sometimes keep forgetting that but yes he's the secretary general and then you got granny granny goodness who's who's being popular as as like a good per as a granny good I think that's what she's called in the public's eye where she just does everything to help the children but well, we all know that's this all a front and then there's that guy good Gordon Godfrey or Godfrey and yes with them all uh, already on the pub out there in the public with their opinions and stuff and swaying people to their side not knowing that those guys are the real villains of course they are able to still keep the people on their side because when the Justice League explodes the goody goggles as a way to get meta to track down meta humans and put and enslave them and stuff Right away, Granny Goodness and everyone in the light already made a quick action to let the public know that n that <laughs> that no, we had nothing to do with that. It was just someone else in our in our company and and people who are working for us who were the real culprits, and they used them as a scapegoat to show that they didn't do anything about had anything to do with this. Of course, this doesn't sit well with Beast Boy. And, I, and he lets Granny know straight off the bat that he knows who she is. But I'm with Granny Goodness on this one. He has no idea who she is. He may have exposed her as being one of the bad guys. But what he doesn't know right now, at least what we, what it seems to show, is that he doesn't know that Granny Goodness is from Apocalypse. <laughs> but if Super... But if Superman and Wonder Woman can get back to Earth and see what's going on there, maybe they can share that information to the Justice League. 
why do I say that? Well, because like, because when Je when the Superman and Wonder Woman were heading back to uh, the Watchtower, I believe they ran into a they ran into a thing called the Orphanage, an a an apocalypse asteroid headquarters that was being governed by Granny Goodness and the and the fem the female. Fe uh, is that what? Oh no, I I forget what they're called. The fe the feminists. The feminist, the female feminist. I hope I said that. No, the female fury, the female fury. Yes, yes, yes. I was trying to get that name out. I just couldn't get that name off the top of my head right there. But yes, the female furies. And I think that's it. Either way, I'm just going to go with that. I'm sorry if I messed that name up. I couldn't remember them off the top of my head. But yes, we actually got to see the female furies in action. And we saw Big Barda, who, who likely we saw in the teaser if y'all take a pause and looked at it yes big barda is there but she's on granny goodness side if i'm not mistaken i think her history kind of went something like that she did work with granny goodness for a time until she changed sides when she met mr miracle i'm not quite sure i don't really know much on the history of the new gods and the comic book side of things but one thing's for certain if they do go in the comic spot then yeah there's no doubt that yes she she works for granny goodness now but she will change sides later on down the down the road but it was still great to see her and the feet and the fit I mean female furies yes the female furies take on the justice League: Superman wonder Wonder Woman and Hawk 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 girl and Hawkman and it was a great battle but they almost they almost end up being destroyed by granny goodness I think Superman man was able to get a good glimpse of granny goodness though and not to mention the fact when he saved Big Barra, I think that's the first sign in her betraying Granny Goodness and switching sides. But, but what is didn't what was known from this here, from this here little encounter was that that orphanage asteroid was actually there to watch over the Watchtower of the Justice League. Basically, and what the way we found that out was Luthor when he was talking with Gordon Godfrey. Godfrey and saying how like we have something orbiting over to watch over the watchtower but not to mention when he was talking with him he also mentioned how his sister Lena Luthor is me is right now in charge of LexCorp with him being the secretary general for the UN whoa man whoa <laughs> This could lead into some interesting things because with Lena Luthor, she's always been that gray character who who tries to do good with everything her brother does because she knows that there's part of her brother that's bad and does bad things. And she kind of wants to show that she could be like the black sheep of the family. But at the same time, she still loves her family that it's hard for her to also make them go into custody or any of, any of that other stuff. So it will definitely be interesting to see if she plays a role going further on on down the line but not only that we also got this thing with Troya with Troya and others who are still on the Justice League public opinion fighting hard to try to get people to understand not to believe in everything they're hearing just because most people are morally on the the more popular side with Lex Luthor and the others and if that's not crazy enough though it's because of the goody goggles and exposing granny goodness that he, he knows who she is that be Beast Boy decides he. This is what makes Beast Boy want to join the team. And speaking of the team, it's get its new rosters. That in the form of the Outsiders, who who before joining Nightwing, Artemis, and Superman were giving them histories on some of the people who who say in a way of telling them that they can choose to be a hero and they can choose to lead the life that they want and they were giving out a history of some of the people that have lost their lives and some of the people who chose to fight in a more different way such as how Troya and Garp who are on the team but are now doing it in the UN opinion but but with that they eventually with that Artem Geoforce, Halo, and Terra and Forager all decide to work to work with the team, which they which they did, and this is where it gave them a recon mission of checking on some Russians and seeing what they're doing. Once they found that out, they were gonna leave until we found out something that I was really hoping we'd see, and it was confirmed to us. Yes, guys, the Suicide Squad Task Force X has been confirmed in the Young Justice universe. Amanda Waller has put together the task the task force x in the form of of that gorilla i always forget his name 
how to say his name, but you also have Black Mantis and Captain Boomerang. And yes, of course, she's got those bombs in their heads because she already demonstrated it with Captain Boomerang, and she did not let up and tell an Aqua lad that if you expose my task force S to the public, I'll expose I'll expose your team to the public. In other words, she knows about the Justice League's Maybe in the public, they say these people aren't on the Justice League anymore, but they're still working with them on co cohesive missions, like coherent missions or something like that. I, keep, I can't remember exactly how that word was put, but one thing's for certain... One thing's for certain is that when ta when Amanda Waller knows how to get something her way, she knows how to get something her way. Because, yes, like, like I said before, how she was able to get Batman to understand the Suicide Squad is necessary. That's a good example right there. And while she didn't exactly get Aqualad to approve of what she does, she does have a leash on him with knowing something that could hurt the public opinion of the Justice League even further. Of course, that didn't sit well with Beast Boy because he felt that they should have exposed it. But I was actually on Aqualad's side because that in that case, no, you shouldn't have done it. But what Beast Boy did next, now that was the way to to do it because I know Beast Boy wants to expose Granny Goodness and all the the false opinions that are being fed to the public, but you don't but you need to do it on the right the right way. Not just blurt it out like that because sometimes some of those things will backfire on you. Which led into the next episode where he was with all of the young justice members and they were all out having some good times together. And they and while they were having some good times to get together uh, uh, something came up to where they had to go on a mission to rescue his girlfriend the princess of Valdemar uh, I think that's how it said I forget what that is I gotta try to start remembering some of these names here guys because I'm bad at it but what what they really they thought that Count Vertical was there to kidnap the princess but it was actually a distraction and the real and it was actually Queen Queen Bee's Queen Bee's henchmen, who were actually part of the attack, they wanted to lure the heroes away so they could get the the kidnapped kids back. But eventually, they show back up. They stop the attack, and Beast Boy decided this was a great way to set public opinion in the right direction, and knowing that the Justice League are here to help, and this is a starting point for him. And it was a great starting point. But but with that all said and done for the main plot points, let's go into some revelations here. I was mentioning earlier. First off, let's go in with Halo. She has gotten some memories back from Gabrielle Dow that, that are connected to the assassination of the king and queen of Markovia, Brion, Geoforce, and Terra's parents. It, so it turns out, and I'm sure this didn't really surprise some of us, we probably felt something like that was seeming a little off, and that was in the fact that Gabrielle Dow was bribed by the guy who had kidnapped who had kidnapped, I mean, not kidnapped, but sent an assassin to kill the king and queen of Markovia. He bribed that, he bribed Gabrielle Dow to open up the door so he could send the assassin. But, and unfortunately, that was a mistake on Gabrielle Dow's part, and she inadvertently was was responsible for the death of them. Now, Halo, with knowing this memory, is keeping it from Brion because she's afraid he'll, he'll hate her for knowing that she that Gabrielle Dow was responsible for for his parents' his death. And maybe she, she's right, because let's admit it, Brion, he, he's, he's a hothead, so he might be like that at first, but he might find a way to get over it with some guidance from some people. And of course, Tara, now Artemis has said that Tara, she's all, she's all quiet and everything, That's because, and she thinks it's because she's been through a lot, but no, nope, that's not what it is. And she's already putting that spy gear to good use, because because she recorded what Dr. Jace was saying and how she wanted to help 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 out in some way and she was thinking about how she could help out Victor and she recorded all that and sent it to Slay which then next thing you know made her go to Dakota City to have a lab to do whatever it is she's doing and when she, and here's the thing when Halo revealed to her about what Gabrielle Dow did Hey, Dr. Jace was playing it all nice and saying, we'll keep this between us, but when Halo left, she called somebody, which I'm not surprised about. I never really trusted that woman because there was just something off about her. 
It's pretty much why I also never really had much of an opinion on her and Black Lightning. All I know is there's not really much you can trust about her right now. We don't know exactly what it is she's doing, but we do know that it that in right now it's suspicious and it can't be trusted and you can't really trust anyone in the team right now almost not not anyone at least the ones that really count such as Tara and Dr. Jace who else who else could there be out there that could really tear this team apart from within oh only one can wonder but but oh also and the last what I also liked about the third episode was that it gave us a little thing with Stag. Although for his case, it was more of a running gag. And that was in the fact that everyone's got someone they can talk to, but he doesn't. And all throughout the episode, it was a running gag and saying, I gotta get a girlfriend. I gotta get a girlfriend. I gotta get a girlfriend. And then... <laughs> oh. You gotta get a girlfriend. Yeah, Tracy takes the line from for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so hilarious. As, so much so hilarious. And speaking of those abductive kids, they also they also gave us a, a little glimpse into the meta-human meta youth center to help them better control and know what to do with their powers. Where you got Black Canary and Miss Martian who are going to be counselors, but you also got some of those runaways from season two who are there helping them out, such as that teleporting guy. He helped out this girl who had wind powers who was going to walk away at first, but he convinced her to stay. And after talking with her, she realized that she could stay. And she was doing all right at first until her powers got out of control that she couldn't stop it stop it until until that guy who teleported her away and was able to stop people from get from lives being in danger, but in, in doing so, it scared her, and seeing that her powers make her a monster, that she ended up deciding to wear an inhibitor collar. Now, I hope in the end, she finds a way to better control it so she can take that inhibitor collar off. Let's hope so, but only time will tell. But definitely, guys, what what a lot of stuff that was to unpack. I could not tell you how much I could unpack there. It was insane, but it was great. I loved it. We're kicking things off in the right direction. First off, we got the Suicide Squad. Second off, we, we're going to get more of the team, it seems, which is great. I'm going to love having that. But we're also going to be learning more and more about Apocalypse and what the light's doing here. Not to mention what Terra and Deathstroke's end of, of infiltrating the team is. This is all going to lead into some crazy stuff. And Nightwing, you're an de detective, man. Put those detective skills to good use and start to realize that some things are seeming off here. Because when... Because in episode 13, when you guys rescued Terra so easily, it surprised me how you did that with not realizing how easy that was and how easy it was to liberate all those kids. Come on, buddy. You can know you can do better than this. But either case, guys, that's all for today, and I hope you enjoyed the episode just like I did. But until then, that'll be all. And if you're enjoying my videos, all you gotta do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. Until then, Mega Geek Mixer signing out. Bye!